Okay, so we have a bit of a synthesis challenge here. We have some starting material, this cyclopentene, and then we have this target molecule with some additional functionality on there, and we want to know how we're going to get there. What are the reagents we're going to use? What sequence uh, are we going to use for those reagents? Basically, how are we going to get from here to here? So take a minute and see if you can figure this out. Okay, so let's talk about this. The first thing we're going to want to do is observe what the transformations were. Let's look at these functional groups and try to get a sense of how they could be introduced and in what order. So we have this uh, CN group, we have this nitrile, and uh, we know that CN minus is, is a great nucleophile, so that could be introduced as a nucleophile attacking. Then we have this section here. So this portion of the molecule is an ether. Now, we don't know if this oxygen was part of this fragment that attacked or if the oxygen was over here and attacked this fragment, but we know that we have to introduce some oxygen functionality somehow. And so um, uh, the other really important thing that we have to mention is that is the trans stereochemistry here. So this is stereospecific, right? We, we have this on a wedge and this on a dash. Uh, these are trans to one another, so whatever we do, we have to ensure that we are going to be getting this trans stereochemistry. So the way we want to proceed is that we know that whenever we have three-membered rings, we've seen this when we do halogenation, we've seen this with epoxides, we know that an SN2 can occur such that one of the carbons is attacked and the new functional group will end up trans to whatever atom was forming the three-membered ring. So that looks like it's probably going to be a really good strategy here for two reasons. Number one, we get this trans stereochemistry chemistry that we want. And number two, if we form an epoxide, we are introducing that oxygen functionality that we want. So why don't we do this? Let's do MCPBA. That's just the classic, uh, the meta, metachloroperoxybenzoic acid is the classic reagent for epoxidation. So let's go ahead and do that. And uh, we'll say that we'll put that on the dash. And so now this would be a great opportunity to go ahead and introduce the nitrile because we know that we've got a great SN2 nucleophile, right? And so this is where a lot of the this is where a lot of the important chemistry can occur. If we have this attack here, right, we're gonna do that. And let's just say it picks up a proton from solvent, so we're gonna get our hydroxyl. So let's put the CN there and then we've got OH, right? Now, uh, so a couple of things here. We know that SN2 proceeds via a backside attack, so we know that this has to approach from the top and then kick this over here, so that is where the trans stereochemistry uh, comes into play here. So now we're, we're pretty close. We just have to figure out how to get this alkyl fragment here. So we want to go from a hydroxyl to an ether. We can see that this oxygen here is already present on the molecule. So we're going to want this oxygen to attack something. So uh, to me, Williamson ether synthesis is the very obvious uh, choice here because we know that we can just deprotonate a hydroxyl and then have that do SN2 on some alkyl halide and we're going to be good to go. And this alkyl, this alkyl fragment certainly can have come from an alkyl halide. So let's just deprotonate. So let's do, usually uh, sodium hydride is probably going to be the, uh, classic, uh, the, the classic reagent used to prepare the, uh, the, the reagent. And now we have the alkoxide. So with the alkoxide, now we just need for this to uh, attack this alk this uh, this vinylic bromide right because if this attacks here and we kick that off we do indeed get our product so we looked at this we saw two functional groups we weren't sure necessarily how the ether was gonna go but it was the trans stereochemistry that tipped us off towards probably doing uh, epoxidation from the epoxide 
We did SN2, that's where the trans stereochemistry uh, came into effect. And then we just did Williamson ether synthesis, deprotonate the hydroxyl, have that attack this alkyl halide, and then that, uh, that, that got into place and we reached our target molecule. So that was a fun little uh, mechanism challenge. Thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. Support me on Patreon so I can keep making content. And as always, feel free to email me, ProfessorDaveExplains at gmail.com.